Hi, my name is Wouter Emery and I'm the founder of Airshaper. In this video, we'll discuss the specifics of motorbike aerodynamics with Joseph Katz, who is the author of the famous book Race Car Aerodynamics, also professor at the San Diego State University and a passionate motorbike rider himself. But before we move on to the interview, let's cover some basic aspects of motorbike aerodynamics and how they differ from cars. First of all, the aerodynamic drag. The frontal area of a motorbike, which is the surface area when looking at the front of an object, is much smaller for a motorbike. But to obtain the total drag on the motorbike, you need to multiply this frontal area with the drag coefficient, and this one is much higher for a motorbike. Because, for example, it's full of small exposed bits and pieces, like the front calipers, the brakes, the wheels, the suspension, and so on. Secondly, the path that the air needs to follow is hardly a smooth one, with for example the windshield abruptly stopping, causing the flow to detach. And last but not least, there's a huge rider sitting on top of the motorbike, causing all kinds of disturbances to the airflow. So the drag coefficient of a motorbike is easily double or more than that of a modern day car. Second of all, the center of pressure, which is the point where the total sum of aerodynamic forces are acting, is quite high above the ground for a motorbike. Now this causes the motorbike to flip backwards compared to the contact point of the rear wheel on the ground, which reduces the normal forces on the front wheel. And with lower normal forces and lower contact pressure, driver control and steering control is reduced. And as the aerodynamic force scales with the square of the velocity, this can really become problematic at higher speeds. One way to counteract this and to obtain a lower center of pressure is a lower rider position. Another one is to apply downforce on the front wheel to counteract this backflipping moment. Now with these basics covered, it's time to move on to the interview. Hey Joseph, good to see you again. So thanks for joining uh, on, in our talk on motorbike aerodynamics. Uh, so I've done a short introduction and now we're very curious to learn your insights and your experiences over the past years in terms of aerodynamics for motorbikes. Yeah, okay, so I would start saying that motorcycle aerodynamics is less developed than uh, vehicle or race car aerodynamics because of several reasons. First of all, it's not as crucial, and also there isn't there is, isn't so much potential to increase performance like in uh, vehicles. One of the reasons is that car has a large undersurface, and if you create a negative force somehow there, then you can really improve performance. Yeah. Also, motorcycles lean and anything you do may not work favorably in a leaning condition. Um, so traditionally, um, uh, aerodynamic in, ra in motorcycles, not just uh, racing, just uh, production, was uh, more uh, rider protection, rain, uh, dirt deposition, uh, engine cooling is always an issue. Yep. Um, we had uh, cases where we improved performance by cleaning up the intake flow into the engine and placing the intakes more in a stagnation point. Uh, these are important aspects, but they are not uh, dramatic as you can be in, in an article in an actual race car. Okay. Um, now, driver position. We have done some testing actually for uh, the AMA uh, Superbike series. And, uh, Turned out that driver position also depends on the vehicle itself. And I have some picture to show later on. Uh, in that particular case, for example, the foot position was really crucial because the way you put your foot on the pegs uh, was able to direct flow into the back wheel and reducing drag, something okay. we never expected. Yeah. And uh, so, but this of course depends on the, on the bike and on the peg location. So, yeah, and now the other question is that, uh, of course, drag reduction, lowering uh, the center of pressure, all that will help. And everything depends on the, the, the condition. If you race in a low speed and lots of turns, that would be one case. Uh, but if you go straightaways at high speed, then usually tire wear becomes crucial because the slip is very large because you full you use full throttle and uh, weight transfer due to the drag is more to the back so that really puts uh, a real hard work on the rear tire yeah. um, 
so this condition, having some downforce uh, in the front would be really beneficial. And you have seen uh, Ducati, re Ducati recently adding those up front. Yes. Yep. Um, one of the criticism I have, no, not criticism, but uh, one of the things I can say about that, if you have those devices and you lean, then the force generated is actually acting in a not favorable position or direction. Pushing so, out of the corner, you mean, instead yeah, of... Yeah, it's more out of the corner. So, um, would be nice if uh, we could have some sort of active device uh, which can actually control the direction of the downforce or the forces generated. Okay, so here, for example, uh, we tested the, the uh, super bike, both on the track, and we actually had a truck going with a probe uh, uh, having the smoke into the, into the face of the rider, but it yeah. actually accumulated in the back. Yeah. So you could see that the floor, and if you look carefully, there are little tufts there, and okay. Yeah. yeah one more time, indicating the flow is not very smooth. Uh, uh, the upper so upper picture shows that the rider actually rider in a wind tunnel, and we could uh, we could measure things. And uh, the main outcome of this type of tests was to educate the rider about sitting position. Yeah. And sitting position. Uh, could have a, a serious effect. Uh, we were able to increase maximum speed almost 10 miles per hour by properly educating the rider and making little changes. The second part of that study was to see what can we do next. And here are some, here's some data on the, uh, on the side force uh, as you, but uh, again, the, uh, large side for, force angles, we go all the way to 20 in the wind tunnel. Yeah. It's not, re <laughs> not realistic. Uh, but again, uh, academically, you want to do anything. Uh, I want to just point out that uh, the lift coefficient was very marginal for this particular case. Um, drag was going up, of course, with side force, uh, with a side uh, slip angle, and uh, the same way uh, uh, the, the force to the side. Yeah. Also, if you follow carefully some of the little tufts that we placed on the bike, you would be surprised that sometimes the flow goes the other direction than you expect. Yeah. So just by cleaning some of those things, you can generate huge saving in drag. As again, uh, our experience was that we did just whatever was very easy and we could gain this 10, 10 plus miles per hour at full speed, at full throttle. So that means that the bikes have a potential large potential for improvement if yep. you look into that aspect. Yep. Uh, I also want to point out that our experience was very positive in uh, recovering the ram air uh, at high speed. And with, because now bikes are fuel injected, they can easily adjust to the density changes. Uh, so we could increase the horsepower by, by that. So, And uh, what about Covering the front wheels, we saw some images of Ducati and, and probably oh, yeah, others. Uh, very... Covering the wheels, uh, like in every, everywhere else, uh, it's going to reduce the drag. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's clear. Yeah. And with that surface it, under an angle, when you're going through a corner, if that surface gets closer to the ground, would there be some kind of ground uh, effect it, acting on that surface, pulling the wheel yeah. down? Now you're going to an area which we tested, and i rather not talk about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You know, for racing, you have to have more integration between the helmet and the front uh, windshield, and uh, little things like that. Uh, now they have, uh, on the jacket, they have something in the back. Yes. Uh, which can help, uh, I think, uh, helmet vibration and... Well, of course, we could do also about helmet vibration by fixing the, the separation point. This yeah. way, the separation point is not moving and the, the, the helmet doesn't vibrate so much. Yeah. Um, so these are the little things at high speed for, uh, but I'm speaking about speeds which are illegal. And I don't want to encourage anybody to do what I do. <laughs> yeah, um, except on the racetrack, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So that was it for this interview with Joseph Katz on motorbike aerodynamics. I'm really looking forward to your comments on this one and if you liked it, please click the like button. Thanks for watching, see you soon, bye bye.